Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here with a fascinating, very unique 1939 telepathy uh, game and um, experimental tool to build ESP, etc. Well, this has a long history to it, and we're going to talk about uh, this in depth here because this is kind of historical item here, and I don't think there's too many of these out there. As I mentioned, these were produced in 1939 by the Calico Ellis uh, Corporation out of Chicago, who made a lot of very educational games, uh, mostly spelling, educational, sports based basketball, some very interesting stuff uh, for their time, and they had many of them. I guess their sales are pretty good. Apparently, um, for some bizarre reason, um, there was a Zenith, a radio show, that started working with J.B. Ryan and also um, did telepathy experiments, which is very interesting. Um, and there's information on that of what the results were, what happened, etc. I'm not going to go into that now. It's too uh, complicated. We want to go through this particular kit and the history of it. But um, very interesting because this was made, even though they had the Zenith radio special and they were having people mail stuff in and they were buying um, cards, uh, Zenner cards, uh, people were buying uh, to participate in the show. What came out, and I'm not sure why or how they came to be in terms of um, producing this particular tool. Mind reading game is what it states here. 1939. I don't know if anybody can see that. Here's the basic box. Somebody's written their name on here. Nothing really on any sides of it. I like everybody to see everything so that they, uh, as a historical record. Now, here's the actual rules for telepathy. And it's very fascinating. Um, you get 10 telepathic texts of four cards each. Descriptive booklet by Dr. Ogden Reed, a noted experimental psychologist who uh, apparently was not even real. A score pad, a sealed envelope containing uh, climax of the game, containing the climax, whatever that means, an envelope addressed to Dr. Reed. The object of the game is to help develop your ability to read thoughts in the mind of other people. Each player acts as the sender in turn. The rest of the group act as receivers. So, I mean, you can... Uh, always like to show people this unless you, if you really want to read some of this stuff, you can stop it and then actually see it. Just the usual light problems, trying to get a clear light here. So we're going to go over all this, and here's the actual cards and so forth. This is pretty fascinating how they put this together, but uh, I don't know why someone would make this and then turn it into some sort of mentalism trick, and that's exactly what happened. So you have these um, actual sets of different cards that you're supposed to send it, and what I like about them is they're very unique. Well, first of all, this is the actual box that you get here, okay? And they're divided this way, and here's number 10. Um, they have actual... I don't know how you would psychically project a music or a song to somebody, and they have the actual lyrics there, but I guess you could. Um... And, of course, this is from 1939, so not too many people are going to get hail. The gang's all here. Dixie, America. I guess people relate to those. Here, all the backs look like this. And, of course, those are number 10. Let me put this flat. Here is time. Time. 
I guess some of the cards are missing. I don't know. Here's eight. Eight is... Blonde. Brunette. The redhead. I do like these cards, and as uh, everyone I know who listens to me, gray hair. Uh, having interesting pictures like this makes the process a lot of fun. So you certainly can use this as a typical send and receive, but there's a twist to all this, which we're going to get into here. Um, salt. And even this, I mean, um, this is kind of an interesting way of doing things. There's supposed to be four of each card here. Um, salt. Pepper. Sugar. Vinegar. Now, how cool is that? Now, you're projecting this to somebody. What I not like about this, which could improve the entire process, is that there's an energy to it. Pepper, hot. Salt, salty, obviously. Sugar, sweet. Does that help the process? Does that help get the message across? I think that's a very good idea and something I'm going to probably add into my own cards. Now, here is some um, just basic design. Zero X, upline, downline. These are pretty boring, um, but interesting. They're different. Do these project better? I mean, we just don't know because nobody's done any kind of testing to speak of. So this was a radio show. People went and uh, they sent out messages. I don't think Ryan himself was involved with it. He originally was and then stepped away from it because it got to Hollywood. And uh, there were problems there, and particularly with this guy, the actually fake Dr. Reed, who was another doctor. And, so, and the toy company decided to give him this fake name, even though he was a psychologist, but um, I'm going to read you the pamphlet here. So here, again, um, angry, surprised, sad, happy. Well, again, that's really cool. Now you're not only projecting words, you're also projecting uh, what could be some sort of energy attached to it, some sort of emotion which uh, you would think uh, would help the entire process here. So um, I think that's a really great idea regardless of the um, bad intent this kit ultimately had. Cold. Hot. Windy. Rainy. Well, how cool is that again? I mean, these not only um, are good to send, but as I said, it's got that energy to it. So I think that's quite a fascinating way, instead of being so dry with so many of these. Uh, so here's foods. Imagine you are tasting a banana, pineapple, grapefruit, and watermelon. Very nicely made. They're nice cards. They all have these kind of things on the back. Uh, these are in color, which I guess for 1939 probably was quite nice. Of course, most of their games seem to be nice from what I can tell online. They're not the type of things I would get based on sports, spelling, etc. But um, they did have some cool stuff with baseball, other things. Um, and apparently were pretty successful. They made a lot of games. So here's just letters again. And uh, they do have the numbers on both sides. You can see at the bottom it says four. And again, it's good to see. Did it, do these transmit better? Are people able to pick up simple things that don't have any energy connected to them? And what are these? Polished glass. Sandpaper. Sponge. Fly paper, sticky, soft, smooth. Very smart, good idea. These are interesting things to project to someone to see again, these have kind of actions to them. They're interesting other than being dry uh, that you usually get. Now the kicker to all this, and we will actually show that, but here's all of it that came with it. Here's, you're supposed to send some results actually to the fake person here, which is the toy company. There were no Dr. Reed. 
I'm not sure why they did that. The other guy was a doctor in terms of a psychologist. I don't know why they did that. They wanted you to send in your test results because this is kind of what the show did. And I'm assuming the toy company um, was just trying to make money off of the Xenic program or maybe the Xenic program contacted them. Um, but here's all the cards listed. You'll see the 10 different uh, card categories. And listings, and you can uh, write down what your results were. As I said, the basic test procedures are in this. And then they had this, which is quite interesting. Telepathy secret envelope. Open at the end of the game and in big letters, not before. Well, what is this all about? How interesting. And here's the actual uh, book by the fake doctor. And uh, Zenith and uh, Dr. J.B. Ryan, too. This is when he was popular. you got to remember, that's how far back he goes. This, you're talking about 1939. Uh, he did his research in the 20s and 30s, and of course, that doesn't discount anything. You don't need special machines to do this kind of mental testing, nor do you need any apparatus to it. It's just basic, good scientific procedure. Um, so what's interesting is that uh, this is what caused problems, and even uh, Zenith uh, Radio offered to pay, and I'm not sure what happened to it, uh, to sue these people because of their... Um, what they stated in their booklet. But here it is. Is there such a thing as telepathy? And of course, uh, that's a question. All through the ages, man has puzzled by personal experience for which he could not uh, explain. At the present time, many able persons are conducting experiments which, in their opinion, seem to point to a mysterious means of communication between two people. Now, again, their opinion. That, woo, that is uh, certainly um, a very negative way of looking at things. So, um, very bad. It sounds like uh, the predecessor. Was this uh, unamazing Randy's daddy who wrote this? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Um, Professor J.B. Ryan of Duke University and his associates have performed many detailed experiments in extrasensory perception. One person, a sender, tries to send an impression to one of five uh, geometric one of five geometric symbols printed on ESP cards. As I've mentioned, uh, they were selling cards, and uh, these were made by uh, Ryan uh, Company, I believe himself, or somebody there. So these were real ESP cards with the Zenner design, otherwise known as very boring. Results, results show that a person can name many more cards correctly than can be done by mere guessing. Dr. Ryan believes the reason for